JTA is excited to present its plan for the future of the Skyway. This plan represents a bold vision to modernize and expand the system to make it a complete urban circulator and support economic growth and livability in downtown Jacksonville. This presentation will provide an overview of the recommendations of the Skyway Modernization Program to include system expansion and the new vehicle technology that will allow us to make the vision a reality. We are pleased that the new vision for the Skyway has already gained support and helped change the conversation surrounding the Skyway. That vision includes using existing investment in the Skyway and harnessing the potential of emerging technology to better connect people and places in and around downtown. So where are we in the process? On February 23rd, the JTA board approved the recommendations of the Skyway Modernization Program Report and authorized staff to begin work on the development of the UTC, or the Ultimate Urban Circulator Program. Previously, staff had conducted extensive analysis on the existing system. This included a review of the vehicles, operating system, and infrastructure. Additionally, a Skyway Advisory Group and Subcommittee of the JTA Board was established to provide policy direction. The direction from these efforts was to keep the Skyway, modernize with new vehicles, and expand the system with a focus on flexibility and support for the vision for downtown Jacksonville. Based on this direction, JTA staff developed the Skyway Modernization Program, which sets the framework for the future of the Skyway. Now we are entering the development of the UTC program. A major part of the UTC program is the vision for extending the current Skyway. The Skyway is 2.5 miles with eight stations. So in a sense, it's the foundation for a more extensive circulator system that was never fully built out. The yellow area depicts a quarter mile buffer area within which the Skyway is accessible by foot. Unfortunately, the current system is outside the reach of some of Jacksonville's great neighborhoods that surround the downtown area and fail to even connect with some of the most critical areas in downtown. Also of note is the fact that much of the new and emerging development in the area is just outside the reach of the Skyway. The new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center and redevelopment in the La Villa area will be connected to the Skyway and this creates a tremendous opportunity to build on the existing Skyway system. So where does the ultimate urban circulator need to go? Well, based on public feedback and analysis of the existing and planned development, the system needs to better connect origins and destinations to serve more complete trips and support the mobility demands of the downtown and surrounding neighborhoods. An east-west connection on the north bank from five points to the sports complex is fundamental to the Downtown Investment Authority's vision. Connections to San Marco, the Baptist MD Anderson complex, and the planned district development are needed. Lastly, the Springfield neighborhood with future connectivity with the UF Health and VA Hospital would complete the system. An exciting element proposed for the UTC is a new bridge crossing the eastern ends of the North Bank and South Bank. This new river crossing is envisioned for transit, bikes, and pedestrians only. It would create an inner transit loop and a pedestrian loop connecting the Riverwalk on both sides. The new crossing would help unify and be a defining element for the entire city of Jacksonville. To ensure the system is effective and useful, we need to identify and address desired system attributes. It is important to have a system that is reliable. Therefore, using the existing elevated structure, it is important in that it provides the greatest level of speed and reliability. It is also critical that the system have a high frequency. In the urban setting with shorter trips, six to eight minute headways may sound great, but the system needs even higher frequency. 
so we need to consider having more vehicles that are smaller and offer even greater frequency than the current system. The system should also have the flexibility to operate as a train set or split up to offer high capacity or high frequency depending on the conditions or time of day. Even more importantly, it needs the flexibility to operate elevated or at the ground level. This would enable the system to be extended more cost effectively and reach nearby neighborhoods that would find an elevated structure too intrusive. Last, as the technology develops, we should consider the opportunity to provide on-demand or point-to-point -point service. Understanding the desired system and attributes of that system, we need to determine the technology that is most capable of getting us there. After extensive analysis and consideration of the alternatives, JTA has determined that the next generation of autonomous vehicles, or AV technology, can give us this system, the ultimate urban circulator. The newer AV is very different than the driverless system operating on the Skyway today. By removing the guide beam, a new autonomous vehicle would have the flexibility to operate elevated or at the ground level. From an operational standpoint, this technology would have the flexibility to run the vehicles individually with really high frequency or connected virtually to provide higher capacity during the peak hours or special events. As the technology develops, JTA would also be able to explore providing more demand responsive or point-to-point -point service as well. JTA is well positioned to capture the promise of this new technology. Today, private sector companies are investing billions of dollars into the development of AV technology. Our current elevated system is the ideal location to begin the deployment of this technology. While much media coverage surround companies like Google and Tesla in the AV space, there are a number of companies that have been developing AV applications for public transit. There are several companies working in the AV area. JTA will be engaging these and other providers to determine the best vehicle for the UTC. Ultra Global established a test facility in Cardiff, Wales in 2001 and has been operating autonomous personal rapid transit vehicles at Heathrow Airport since 2013. To Get There has been operating since 1999 in the Rivium Business Park in the Netherlands and plans to expand into mixed traffic by 2020. Their Mazdar PRT opened in 2010. Navia is working a partnership with University of Michigan and the M-City project. Local Motors is based in the Baltimore area and their Ollie vehicle uses IBM Watson and 3D printing for their vehicles. Easy Mile has conducted extensive demonstrations with their EZ10 vehicle throughout the U.S. and worldwide. This new path is a major departure from the current Skyway. While we believe AV is clearly the best solution, we have some important issues to resolve as we move forward and make this plan a reality. As it relates to the infrastructure, we must conduct a structural analysis related to the removal of the beam and creation of a new running surface on the elevated structure. We also need to work with our partners at FDOT to assess requirements for the walls on the elevated structure to ensure proper safety. And depending on the elevation of the running surface and boarding height of the vehicle, a plan must be developed to modify the station platforms. We will also be looking at options for transitioning the system from the elevated structure to the ground level and coordinating with the city and FDOT to identify opportunities for dedicated lanes for the UTC. Lastly, with a larger fleet of very different vehicles, we need to assess the maintenance and storage needs of the vehicles. When we select the vehicle and operating system, JTA will be looking at the vehicle design as well as the performance specifications. This includes items like speed, capacity, and ADA accessibility. Additionally, we will be looking at the needs for onboard systems and wayside controls including vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure communications. Safety considerations will be considered throughout, as well as how the vehicle will be powered. This is definitely an exciting project, and we want to get it into operation as soon as possible. 
but we need to go through important steps to ensure we develop a system that is safe, effective, and sustainable, and serves the mobility needs of downtown Jacksonville. So what's next? With board approval, we are ready to begin developing the project. This includes developing the infrastructure conversion project, including a structural assessment to address critical issues discussed previously. Vehicle selection and or development will include extensive dialogue with vendors, including a vendor forum currently planned for May, and the development of an AV pilot that will allow JTA to identify and resolve critical issues before a vehicle is developed for our system. Expansion of the current system will be done in a manner that allows the projects to compete for federal funding. JTA is working closely with FDOT and using their transit concepts and alternatives review process, which will ensure we can effectively compete for funding. Throughout the process, JTA will continue to engage the public and key stakeholders. We view this as a defining project for the city of Jacksonville and Northeast Florida. It is important that we have strong support from our local elected officials, businesses, and community leaders to pursue this project. From a system expansion standpoint, we expect the initial focus to be the east-west corridor, connecting the Five Points area to the sports complex. However, all extensions have merit, and if partnership opportunities arise to advance other extensions, we need to be flexible. One near-term opportunity is a short extension to Brooklyn. This area has seen and continues to experience tremendous growth and redevelopment. It is one of the most exciting developments in the city of Jacksonville, and we want to connect with it as soon as possible. Therefore, we are exploring the feasibility of including this short extension in the infrastructure and vehicle conversion project. 